So, hello everybody. Welcome to a new video with me, Daniel Detweiler. Today, I just give you a very short input about why you should work on the dynamics in your mix. Stay tuned. <laughs> so, um, actually, you all know that we use compressors all the time in the mix, don't we? And lately I've been asked by some students, why do we compress? Why couldn't we just leave the dynamics played by the musicians as it is and just get that to tape or to Pro Tools nowadays? Well, and I think that's a brilliant question. Uh, there is a lot of talk about that one in my paid master class. However, um, yeah, let me just explain this in about 10 minutes, just really the basics and what it's all about. So, first of all, if you are listening music live, well, that's great. And that's something totally different than if you are listening to music on speakers. The main difference is that live, the volume of musicians is set by themselves or if it's a concert with a, with a mixing engineer, then it's set by the engineer. However, the listeners at the concert have no control over the volume. And even if you just take an acoustic jazz band that plays without any amplification, it's rather loud. There is a drum, maybe a saxophone, a piano. Uh, that's a loud thing. And everything that they play comes to your hearing system in a way that you can hear everything. If they play super loud, well, then you might even stand up because you like it. If they play super soft, you still hear every small detail. And as you might know or not, uh, every tone that happens in music has harmonics. That is what makes the tone. That is what makes it rich, what makes it sound nice. If a tone would not have harmonic content, it would be a sine wave. And the sine wave is not something we would like, and it's not something that happens in nature. All instruments have harmonics. And the harmonics, the upper harmonics, are obviously lower in level than the, uh, than the lower harmonics. So what happens if the musician plays at the soft level, at the low level, uh, is that the upper harmonics are also even lower. Now, the difference between listening to music at home is very clear. Somebody at home that puts in a CD or listens to music on Spotify, what is the first thing that this guy will do? Well, he goes to the volume knob and he sets the volume at the level that he likes to listen to this music on. And this is really important and something, sometimes I think that musicians and even sound engineers just forget about this. Well, the volume is not the same as it was on the stage. And mostly the volume will be lower. And it will be way lower than you as a musician or you as an engineer might wish it is. It might be totally low and then people even maybe want to talk at the same time. So if you think about that you have harmonic content and the harmonic content is anyway lower in volume than the deeper harmonic content. And now they play soft, so everything is again lower. So finally at home there is really not much chance that you still could hear it. And then all the harmonics are basically just lost. An excellent test that you could do yourself to make sure the dynamic content of your mix is right is Make your mix softer. So put really the volume down. Put it down as much as you can so that it's really soft. Then listen your mix, but at the same time you talk. Now if you talk and your voice might well be as loud as the mix or even louder. In a good mix where the dynamics is set correctly, maybe some nice compression or however you control the dynamics, you will not lose the musical connection from one instrument to another instrument. The connection will still be there. If your mix is not yet good regarding dynamics, then the connection is lost as soon as you listen to it at a low level and you talk at the same time. It's simply not yet a good mix. And this is basically the reason. If this is the concert dynamic, our dynamic that we submit to our 
clients or listeners that listen at, on loudspeakers should be, should be smaller, way smaller. And the goal is that you could do this in a way that it doesn't sound too compressed because we don't want to listen to overcompressed mixes. That's really not what we, what we want. And it is not easy, but uh, it can be done. You just have to train it. Um, training is the most important important thing. But you have to realize without compression, music does not work at home. And what happens if you don't compress? Then the entire music just gets small, small, smaller and smaller. And that is the reason why we have small sounding mixes so often today. And you hear it if you listen to mixes of big American artists that are mixed by really good American engineers, be it Chris Lord Elgie or Michael Brower, well, it always sounds big. If you listen Born in the USA, I mentioned that song, uh, I think, in the last week. Well, make the test. Bring the volume down as far as you could talk, but you will not lose the musical connection because you still can hear all upper harmonics well. This goes for every good mix. This is one of the difference between a good mix and a bad mix. It's the harmonic content is heard always on a good mix and it's not heard on a bad mix. And finally, whatever happens in music must be heard on loudspeakers, otherwise something is missing. And it must be heard on loudspeakers, again, on very low volumes too. And it's a big mistake in a recording studio uh, that many engineers are always just mixing loud. You can mix loud sometimes, but you also have to mix soft. And moreover, if the client is not happy, if the musician is coming in and say, well, I think my bass sounds small. What happens so often in studios is that the engineer just puts the entire signal to the big speakers. He makes it loud and say, no, no, just listen on those speakers. Look, it's fine. Yeah. What happens now is he just made it big and as loud as it was on the concert. And then we don't have a problem. You can also try this with a snare. If you have a small sounding snare, if you listen it louder, all is good. But your listener at home won't put it louder. They will put it lower. So yeah, that is my uh, very short extract about dynamics. If you want to have more information, there is a, I think, a one hour tutorial on YouTube on this topic that is free. It's called Why Your Mix Sounds Small. I believe it's called like this. Uh, or you, you'll find it if you enter my name in YouTube. Or then there is really a lot of information about this topic in my masterclass that I could really recommend you to buy it. It's not uh, expensive. It's on sale at the moment for $110. Um, take that if you really want to convert with the topic. But once for sure, it has to be trained. Okay, so thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel, ring the bell, go to my homepage to see the masterclass and see you next time. Bye.